Belgian officials made several arrests Friday in connection with the recent attacks in Brussels. Among those arrested is Mohamed Abrini. Police detained him during a raid in Belgium Friday. Abrini is believed to have helped carry out the attacks in Paris last year. For analysis of the arrest in Belgium, I'm joined by CBS national security analyst Juan Zarate, who is on the phone with us. Juan, what is your reaction to the raids carried out in Belgium Friday? Well, Lane, this is good and helpful news for the Belgian authorities as well as the French authorities who've been worried about uh, this individual and certainly have wanted to capture him in order to understand better not only his role but what he knows about other operatives who form part of this francophone network that has proven so deadly in both Paris and Brussels. And so authorities are going to be focused very, very intently on trying to understand uh, what this individual knows, uh, with whom he's been communicating, certainly trying to exploit as much information uh, about him and from him as possible. And so this is good news because uh, he's, a, he's a major character who is obviously dangerous. Uh, he's no longer a risk to the public. Uh, and he's certainly a font of great information potentially for authorities. You know, when we were talking to our Charlie Daggett earlier, he mentioned that it's quite possible Abrini traveled to Syria and that his brother is actually known to have traveled back to Syria. Obviously, this is still very early in the process, Juan, but what would that suggest, if anything, to you? Well, it suggests a couple things, uh, Elaine. One is that uh, as we know, there is more fluidity in the travel between Syria and Europe uh, than previously thought. What we've discovered with uh, the emergence of these networks, uh, the fact that you've had family members involved, the fact that the major leaders of these networks have traveled back and forth um, rather freely uh, is suggestive of a, of a very fluid network that continues to operate uh, between Europe and Syria, and, and one that doesn't see a real divide between Syria and Europe. This is all sort of one environment for them. Secondly, the, the fact that these groups continue to leverage existing and known networks of operatives, be they family members or previously known uh, social uh, or even criminal networks that have formed part of these cells. We, we've seen this in a European case after European case. The, the the reality that these are networks that uh, may have been known to authorities before, may have been expanded over time, but uh, are a fairly cohesive um, set of actors that has been reinforced in Syria and that ISIS has then leveraged to send back into attack. And so all of this new information, uh, especially the good reporting that Charlie's given us, uh, reinforces some of those impressions and certainly will raise concerns still that you have more operatives out there uh, that may be trying to get to Europe from uh, Syria if they're not already in Europe. Uh, Juan, I know you and I talked last month after the arrest of uh, Abdus Salam, and we discussed the fact that there had been, uh, it's an interesting development, that, that there had been this person, Salah Abdus Salam, living in this neighborhood, uh, essentially right under the noses of uh, Belgian authorities. I'm wondering, uh, what is your sense of the interview process now uh, that's going to be carried out uh, with Abrini, this latest arrest? Um, what do you think uh, will take place as far as extracting intelligence, usable intelligence, getting that information that you talked about at the top, as well as possibly identifying uh, other suspects? Well, Lane, it's a great question because I think in Belgium there's been some soul search searching as to whether or not the questioning of Abdel Salam after his capture the Friday before the Brussels bombings uh, was vigorous enough, whether or not it entailed enough uh, questions in detail around uh, future plots as well as other networks, uh, and whether or not, frankly, they took enough time with him to ask him questions. Uh, part of that had to do, of course, with the fact that he was wounded. Uh, but your question is important because there has been a lot of political and internal discussion in Belgium as to uh, what information should be gathered from uh, these kinds of individuals. Um, so they're, they're obviously going to be as aggressive as they can be in terms of the scope of questions that they're asking. Uh, they're going to try to get as much information about uh, current and uh, future 
threats potentially, so information about potential plots, anything that he's known or heard about uh, that could be a potential plot with respect to target set, respect to individuals involved, with respect to methodology. Uh, they'll want to know about any weapons or explosives that may be out there, either factories or, or experts or materiel. Uh, they'll want to understand uh, all the contours of his communications and network. And so no doubt if he had a cell phone on him or a smartphone, uh, Belgian authorities are, are probably not going to be shy about trying to access as much information as possible to understand who he's been in contact with, especially uh, since he's been back in Europe and especially since the attacks in both Paris and Brussels. And so they're going to do everything possible to deepen their knowledge, to uh, discover new knowledge uh, around these networks. And, Elaine, as you and I have discussed uh, over time, the Europeans have realized in arrest after arrest uh, that they still don't have their arms around all of the elements of this network, uh, which is not only a scary proposition, but adds enormous urgency and pressure to the counterterrorism work of these officials. So this interrogation and all of the information exploitation around this arrest um, will be critical to adding more uh, detail and discovery to what the Europeans know about the threat. Yeah, still a lot of unanswered questions. All right, Juan Zarate, thank you so much for your analysis. My pleasure, Elaine. Thank you. In the next installment of CBSN Originals, we revisit Brussels after the terror attack. Our own Vladimir Duccier visited Brussels, finding a city filled with sorrow and anger. Join us Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern for the full episode of CBSN Originals, Terror in Brussels, Hiding in Plain Sight.